everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this snowy Thursday, February 4th, 2021. Jeremy Crosby here. Hope you had a wonderful day. Hopefully you got to stay uh, inside and uh, at home uh, with uh, the craziness of uh, the snowstorm. Uh, at times, uh, the snow has been coming down uh, like gangbusters. I sent Andrew a text uh, because it was, when we were uh, taping the show, it was coming down like crazy. And it was like five minutes before was hardly anything so uh it looks uh looks picturesque out there uh, but also uh slippery uh as well and uh we'll uh, talk a little bit about that uh, coming up on the show today uh, and also talk about those cold temperatures coming in uh, we really take that seriously here on the on the show and been trying to give you some safety tips all this week so uh, we'll uh, get to that coming up here uh not only in our headlines we'll talk more in depth on it during our digest segment today plus we're talking uh with our uh our our star our fitchburg stars only and uh, kimberly she'll be here on the show give us a council recap from last week so a lot to get to here uh, coming up on today's show. We first uh, turn our attention uh, once we get through the first part of the storm. Uh, you know what's coming, and it's bitterly cold temperatures. Yeah, wind chills uh, may fall between 20 to 30 degrees below zero Saturday night into Sunday morning. And then wind chills uh, Friday night into Saturday morning again, Sunday night into Monday. Uh, those uh, are uh, 10 to 20, still below zero. And if you've looked at the forecast, I've seen a lot of people post this up, like 100% chance of snow today. <laughs> and then it just is just minus, minus, minus. <laughs> and yeah, it's just kind of sad. Uh, but uh, quick facts here. Uh, you know, you want to definitely be prepared uh, uh, for uh, this uh, cold weather. Uh, and again, we'll talk more about uh, uh, being ready, making sure uh, your heat set, all of those things uh, coming up here. Uh, we want you to be uh, prepared for that. And uh, yeah, uh, that includes um, putting a freeze on fires at your house. Uh, yeah, home fires occur more in the wintertime. We know this from talking with Dorn. Uh, but uh, as uh, we do uh, look at these uh, cold times coming up, uh, we want to make sure that you are doing everything you can to prevent uh, heating fires uh, as uh, they are can be the source uh, in uh, fires from December through February. In fact, one in seven home fires in one in every five homes fire deaths uh, involve heating equipment. So keep anything that can burn at least three feet uh, from any heat source like a fireplace, wood stoves, radiator, or space heaters. Keep portable generators outside, away from windows, and as far away from your home as possible. Install and test the carbon monoxide alarms at least once a month. Plug one heat uh, producing appliance like a space heater into electrical outlet at a time. Have a qualified professional clean and, uh, and inspect your chimney and vents every year. Store cooled ASHA, ashes in a, a tightly covered metal container and keep it outside for at least 10 feet away from the house. If you nearby buildings uh, uh, for uh, safety, ashes can burn up for a couple of days. So and when that stuff's hot, you got to definitely uh, have a plan for that and uh, keep a separation going there. And yeah, you saw here on the graphic uh, some other uh, great safety tips. Again, we'll talk more about uh, staying warm uh, and safe uh, during uh, this uh, Arctic blast that we're about to uh, walk ourselves into here after uh, the snowstorm moves on. All right, other news. Uh, City of Fitchburg Healthy Neighborhoods uh, grant program uh, is uh, still accepting applications. Uh, this uh, started back on January 19th, and it goes uh, through February 22nd. All interested nonprofit organizations that meet the program's eligibility requirements are encouraged to apply. Please see the following uh, link at fitchburgwi.gov. That's where they encourage you to uh, look up uh, information about this. Uh, all of the, uh, the application process all is done there through the website. So check it out for more information. All right. Uh, be healthy. Be happy. Uh, these programs uh, will be offered uh, via Zoom on Fridays from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. and will be facilitated by a medical student from the UW School of Medicine and Public Health. And uh, we want to make sure that you check out this one uh, because this Friday is, <laughs> as I said, is the one that uh, is coming up here. Uh, and it's a virtual eat well, feel well class. Uh, cook some yummy, yummy healthy recipe uh, recommended by the American Diabetes Association. So once you take part in all of these, they are done by Zoom, so you got to register and call 270-4290. Uh, that's the senior center's number to get registered. Yeah, we want to make sure uh, you do try that out. Also, I want to see if you've tried this out. Have you tried a virtual gathering? 
it's pretty easy. Just saying, like we're doing this, like Andrew and I are doing that right now. Virtual gatherings are the safest way to stay in touch with your friends and loved ones. Remember to physically distance from anyone who does not live with you. If you uh, do decide to get within six feet of others, take precautions that can help decrease your risk. You can see all those recommendations and more uh, on the website of, uh, of the Dane County Public Health or Madison Public Health of Dane County. They've got it all there for you. And uh, yeah, still want to, but you know, if you haven't seen your friends, why not try a, try a gathering? I see a lot of people have done it. I've, I haven't done like a group one yet. I mean, like we meet as a staff, you know, uh, every other couple of days. So it's still fun. Just saying. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, finish out here with finally Dane County now accepting, uh, park and ride grant program applications. That's P A R C. I'm guessing this is a abbreviation uh, from Joe Priesty announces, uh, this park and ride grant program back in the County is now, uh, uh, accepting grant applications. This grant program provides matching grant uh, to communities and organizations that are interested in developing regional bicycle playgrounds and other regional bike and pedestrian trails. The 2021 Dane County budget has $500,000 in matching funds, uh, which are available through the uh, Park and Ride program. Towns, villages, cities, and other governmental units and nonprofit organizations are eligible to receive up to 50% of the project cost to offset the bike trail or playground design engineer in uh, construction cross gear. Grants will be awarded for the developed uh, off-street uh, shared use trails, including amenities to support facilities, such as trailheads, parking area signage, and safety facilities. New uh, uh, this year to the grants will also be awarded for the development of regional bicycle playgrounds. Bicycle playground is designed with features to offer a variety of fun obstacles that uh, safely build cycling confidence for kids. We actually have one of these playgrounds uh, up where I live in the boonies. It's really a lot of fun. We walk it, <laughs> we walk it all the time. We're trying to train, train our daughter to ride a bike, but just saying it's really cool. Uh, more information on those grants, DaneCountyParks.com uh, information backslash grants. All right, that does it for our headlines coming up next. We open up the digest. We're talking about uh, cold weather and safety. That's next right here on Talking Fitchburg. I expect it to be a lot easier. I thought it was going to be a piece of cake. I didn't know what step to take next. I was transitioning from the military. I was a vehicle gunner. An avionics specialist. I was an MP, military police. My friends thought I could do anything. I missed my unit, my family. Playing with my daughter, I, I felt like a stranger. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't sleep. I just wanted to be by myself. I didn't have a clear sense of what to do next. I was too proud. And then I thought, if I'm going through this, other veterans have gone through it too, too right? I started to open up. And it made a huge difference. So I reached out and I saw that I wasn't alone. Because before I was able to take on my next mission, I had to take on just taking care of myself. To find purpose. purpose. We are not alone. Other veterans have transitioned from the military and overcome mental health challenges. Visit maketheconnection.net. Talking Fitchburg in the digest today. We're going to do some more talk about uh, that cold weather and uh, getting you ready for this uh, polar blast. Call it what you will. It's going to be cold. I want to make sure you stay safe out there. Uh, so Andrew uh, has uh, come up with some uh, uh, some graphics here, and uh, we've got this from the CDC uh, in their disaster in winter uh, prep. And uh, starting off here uh, with a graphic uh, that kind of identifies uh, the different areas uh, when you're talking about uh, being ready uh, for winter weather. So we've been preparing you for the, the rain, ice, snow uh, that's going on now. Uh, but uh, there's other things, too, when we're talking about that polar blast coming in. Uh, so uh, some areas that we can look at is have your chimney uh, or flu inspected every year. Make sure you take care of that. Chimney fires uh, definitely uh, uh, are on the rise. Uh, in, uh, install smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in your home and test them, right? 
Everybody puts them in, but do you test them? Yeah, you need to test them. Even if they're the hardware ones, you got to test them and replace them at least every 10 years. Check the manufacturing on that uh, for more information. Make sure that the batteries are working properly uh, with uh, those uh, smoke and uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Insulate walls and attic, chalk and uh, weather strips uh, around the doors and windows, especially coming up here. You're going to want to keep every uh, single uh, inch of uh, warm air in your house at this point. Never leave uh, a lit candle or other flame uh, uh, unit unattended. Bring your pets indoors as temperatures drop. And uh, yeah, prepare yourself for the exposure of winter weather. That's a huge, huge thing here uh, as uh, we work through some of this. So uh, we talked about some of this on the update, and uh, we'll just uh, race through these uh, pretty quickly here. But uh, heat uh, your home uh, safely. Uh, turn uh, on uh, uh, turning on the stove for heat is not a safe thing to do. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that. It wasn't built to heat your homes, uh, apartments, whatever. Uh, don't do that. Uh, um, but you also need to be prepared, too, uh, for if the power does go out, um, you know, having extra blankets, sleepy bags, uh, warm winter coats. Are you ready? Have you, have you thought about that if uh, something does happen and you uh, have to uh, find alternative heat sources, um, especially if it happens in, like, a whole neighborhood, right? Like, maybe you're like, I'll just go to my neighbor's house. Well, if the neighbor's house electricity out, you're all going to need uh, some type of help. So uh, be ready for that, uh, uh, certainly electrical space heaters with automatic shutoff switches uh, and non-glowing elements. You know, a lot of the old ones, I can remember growing up with one that had the, where you saw the element was orange. <laughs> that thing got hot, let me tell you. <laughs> and uh, it did not have an automatic sh shutoff switch. And looking back now for what we know about those things, that was a fire waiting to happen. No question about that. Uh, definitely, uh, we talked about keeping uh, things away from the heat sources at least three feet uh, from uh, from those uh, heating elements. So important uh, because fires uh, do uh, do occur uh, when uh, those heat when you put things near uh, those heat sources. Um, that uh, being important, uh, using generators and other appliance safety generators should be located at least twenty feet uh, away from window, door, or vents uh, space uh, where uh, rain or snow will not reach them. Protect yourself from carbon monoxide CO poisoning by installing battery operated CO detectors. Yeah, you got to think about this too. Um, like we know we're going to have heavy winds with this storm specifically. Uh, so, you know, think about where that exhaust is actually going. I always think about that, like for people who've had to use generators and stuff, like 20 feet away is still not, not that far away. And, uh, you know, if the wind direction changes, make sure it's not just like blowing right into your house because you will be in trouble. Super important to have that carbon monoxide uh, uh, for that. Conserve heat as well. Some gas fuel heaters, such as ventless gas fireplaces, require some ventilation. Otherwise, you don't uh, need extra ventilation. Keep as much heat in the uh, house as possible. So, you know, if you're not using some of those things, close the vents. So the cold air isn't coming in. Avoid un uh, unnecessarily opening doors and windows. Close off uh, unneeded uh, rooms, uh, stuffed towels and rags under cracks and doors. Close drapes and cover windows with blankets at night. Do things that, you know, to keep yourself warm. Save yourself a few bucks, too, in the heating the home uh, as well. Find that uh, right balance uh, for uh, keeping warm. Warm. And uh, there are uh, uh, a whole bunch of more uh, great uh, information here. Uh, in fact, Andrew, I hope uh, if we can share the link for this today, uh, that would be good so people can uh, definitely check out uh, these and other great tips out there. I know this stuff's common sense, but uh, we like to review it, get it out there uh, to get you thinking of extra ways uh, to stay safe. And this isn't going away. We're looking at a full week of this where temperatures don't even get cross 10. <sighs> Cold. <laughs> Andrew just says cold. <laughs> and I agree. All right, we'll take a quick break. Coming up next, check in with the Fitchburg Star on your council recap right here on Talking Fitchburg. So, how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one fourth of one half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh no. But today, I was ready. 
I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Find good stuff at Goodwill and bring good home. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today is our uh, expert, if you will, uh, a great uh, writer, editor, and uh, jack of all trades. Uh, we've got Kimberly here from the Fitchburg Star. Uh, Kimberly, how are you doing today? We're doing pretty good. So far, we'll we'll push you into the so far, uh, right? <laughs> into the deep end. <laughs> Uh, but we'll get right into it uh, as we recap, uh, 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 look back here at uh, council. Uh, we couldn't get you in last week. You had some uh, uh, well-deserved vacation. So we're uh, glad to have you back here uh, this week. And we'll start here with uh, Fitchburg. Uh, talk about additional employees needed for the town of Madison when that uh, annexation uh, happens. Uh, what do you know on that front? Yeah, so um, a little bit of background just to get this started. Uh, Town of Madison will be dissolving in uh, October 2022, um, just because with um, with other annexations of town land throughout the years, it's basically basically become a patchwork of uh, of land. So the city of Fitchburg will be inheriting um, two significant parcels. One is at the top of Fish Hatchery Road, um, the Zimbrick dealership. It's got four four or so dealerships um, right out, right out, right south of the Beltline. Um, the other one is the Southdale neighborhood, which is a significantly larger piece of land that, um, that the city will be inheriting. So all in all, that's about 200 acres of land that the city will be inheriting, um, which means that the city is growing. It will need more employees. So um, they outlined at least 15 employees on the, um, on the, uh, on the needed list at the Committee of the Whole meeting last week. Um, and that ranges from clerical staff to uh, at least three more police officers. They had three outlined, um, but you know, there always could be more. Um, and then you have public works, human resources. So there's a, there's a myriad of, of positions needed um, as, as more land will come into the city. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's been a, a, a ongoing process uh, as we uh, learn more and more about it. Uh, there'll uh, be more information to be had here uh, coming up down the road, and uh, we'll uh, keep up on your reporting on that. Uh, we also have the administrator uh, searches uh, off and running, and uh, we have our survey out there. If you haven't taken that yet, uh, you should take the survey not to steal your thunder. But uh, what uh, what do you know on the, on that front? Well, I'm actually going to correct you and say that the survey is over now. Uh, they closed the survey. Ooh. So they, the survey is done. Um, so, but I can tell you about the results of the survey. Um, so the survey that was sent out, I think January 20th is when it opened. Um, it was open for, for a couple of weeks. So it asked people, um, the community members, staff members, business leaders, to rank what they thought the top personal and the top professional qualities that they wanted to see in the next administrator were. Um, 
the top three personal characteristics that came out of that survey um, included integrity as number one and uh, just around two thirds of people, um, 65.9% to be exact. Um, but almost two thirds of people said, hey, we would really like integrity to be, integrity to be a, um, a top personal characteristic. Um, another third put down respectful, that was the number two response. Um, and the third was values others opinion. Um, and then diversity inclusion minded um, also ranked fourth with 28%. Um, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this over here so you guys don't have to see the side of my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. I, you've got a lot of information to go through. I, I do the same thing. I got my computer right in front of me, so. <laughs> Uh, no fret there. <clears throat> um, and so then the top three business characteristics were uh, local government experience and that uh, that brought in nearly 60% of people said they wanted someone, uh, whoever the next person was going to be, they wanted them to be experienced with local government. Um, the second ranked one was budgeting and financial experience. Um, nearly a third of people said, hey, we'd really like someone who, who knows their way around a budget. Um, and then third was uh, striving to ensure diverse stakeholders are heard and involved in decisions. Um, so yeah, we had we had pretty much at least on the personal uh, attributes, it was very much the same, uh, maybe with a few tweaks. Um, Sarah mentioned during the personnel meeting, they were very, very much the same as what, um, what people wanted back in 2015, the last time the city did an administrator search. Um, and so this time though, diversity and inclusion minded was also on that list. So um, didn't show up on the 2015 one because it wasn't there, but um, that one ranked higher now because it was included. So um, yeah, then they are looking to have an administrator start uh, mid June-ish and they're, they're planning to ramp up the process. I'm pretty sure today uh, or last week Actually, it must have been last week because I'm now a week behind, or is it? No, it's this week. It's this week. I have vacation brain. Um, <laughs> I think today they are going to use what is called the uh, like an equity hiring tool, where they're going to go through the um, the job requirement, um, and they're going to look at it with an equity lens. You know, does does this requirement is it equitable? Is it inclusive? Um, all of those kinds of things. So. Yeah, it's hard when you've got meetings <laughs> <laughs> over two no, weeks. No, no so worries. I don't even know what day it is, guys. <laughs> And that's all right. We're not going to tell you what day it is. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep going here. Uh, and a reminder, you can catch uh, all the meetings uh, that Kimberly is referring to right here on FACT TV at the Gov channel. That's uh, uh, where you can get caught up and uh, see uh, exactly or hear uh, what uh, is going on on all of these fronts. So we, uh, we love Kimberly for uh, breaking it down for us. Uh, uh, on some of the highlights. Uh, finally, uh, Fitchburg Recreation Department, uh, uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the future funding of that department. Sure, yeah, it's, it's all personnel today. Um, so bring us a little bit of context. So with COVID-19, um, there were really no recreation programs after March um, because of gathering uh, restrictions due to COVID. Um, and so, a lot of the fees paid for these recreation programs then turn around and go back to paying the salaries of the two recreation employees. Um, so in November, it was brought forward, actually the day after the 2021 budget was approved and finalized that, hey, we might have to lay off uh, one of the rec employees and we might, not, we might have to reassign another one uh, to a different department for the time being with uh, around half the half a salary. So um, logically that did not sit well with Alders um, and they, they wanted to find a way to amend this just approved budget to make sure that they could pay employees, these two employees starting January 1st. So um, back in December, they found the majority of this money, they found around seventy-five thousand dollars to make sure that these two employees were still paid. Um, and then, if I'm getting my dates right, it was the Common Council meeting last Tuesday, um, where they they finally uh, finished off the rest of that um, 
by by doing some budget movement. So there will be recreation employees in the city for 2021. Um, and fingers crossed that the vaccine rollout uh, ramps up and the city could potentially have recreation activities uh, throughout the rest of the year and um, they can start bringing in some revenue um, to, to help out. So fingers crossed, because uh, who isn't tired of this pandemic? <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, and we uh, talked to uh, Austin, uh, one of uh, the the staff over there at the recreation department this past week, and uh, they've got uh, programs already up and running. So uh, they have been off and running here uh, pretty quick. So if you want to check out on some of those programs, we definitely encourage people to go to the website and jump on board and check it out. Uh, for, for everybody to stay up to date on what you're working on, uh, where can uh, folks go to find more information uh, in between uh, the paper arriving? Absolutely, so uh, we update our website on a daily and weekly basis. Um, you can go to connectfitchburg.com and that's where you'll find all of our stories um, on Fitchburg City, Fitchburg community. Um, we cover uh, Verona and Oregon schools. Those are coming over from our two other papers, the Verona Press and the Oregon Observer. Um, so be able to read school stories there. Um, we have sports there um, and it is all updated pretty regularly. So um, you can also sign up for our newsletter and that can be done on connectfitchburg.com where uh, the newsletters come out every Thursday and you'll have, a, you'll have at least five or six new stories to read. So um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you uh, for your time uh, as always. And uh, we look forward to checking back in with you already next week. So we'll get you two weeks in a row here uh, as we get back to uh, back to normal. So uh, appreciate your time, Kimberly, as uh, always. And again, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Yes, talk to you soon. Bye. All right. I came over there for the Fitchburg Star. Again, uh, check out the website for the latest uh, news uh, happening here in and around Fitchburg. Take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household. But phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and stay home unless absolutely necessary. Use a delivery service for essential items like food and medicine. If you must make essential trips, stay six feet apart from other people. Wear a cloth face covering and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg, wrapping up the show for the day. I want to thank Kimberly for Fitchburg Star joining us, uh, giving us the update. We'll check back in with her next week as we wrap up. Well, besides just staying in and staying off the roads, this just gives you an extra reason to stay connected with Fact TV. You can watch this show. You can watch some of your the local government meetings all in the comfort of your warm home. It's cold out there. <laughs>